What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. And on today's episode, we'll be discussing Alex Caruso's impact on the team and how he could be the X factor in the playoffs. We'll also be talking about uh, Nikola Vucevic and getting his 38th double-double in 59 games played so far this season. We'll also be giving injury updates for Alex Caruso, Zach Levine, and Patrick Williams. We'll do all that and preview the upcoming week right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central. Okay, Bulls fans. So first off, we all know that the impact that Alex Caruso had in his return against the Cleveland Cavaliers for the Chicago Bulls. I talked about it very heavily. The post game show is already posted, so definitely go out and check that if you want a full analysis on the game itself. But one thing that I will say with Patrick, with uh, with Alex Caruso's return is the fact of just how much more energy he brings this team, the leadership, especially now with him and Tristan Thompson coming off that bench, the leadership that they add. But the thing with Alex Caruso that I also want to point out, very early on in the season, we talked about very frequently how uh, the Bulls being in the passing lanes, getting turn turnovers, uh, changing those into transition points, especially with a bench they didn't have at that time because they were still missing Kobe White for a long stretch of that, did not have a real big scoring threat off the bench. Now when you look at bringing Alex Caruso back his impact on the bench, his playmaking, as well as uh, the steals that he brought. Can Alex Caruso be the actual X factor? Very early in the season, we talked often about who could be the X factor for this team. And I think what we're seeing, and we'll wait and see with the return of Lonzo and uh, Patrick Williams as well, who ends up and how this team ends up having an X factor. Because I'm really looking forward to seeing Javante Green come off the bench too and what his energy brings. But with that being said, Alex Caruso, that leadership, his intensity, all that can very well make him an X factor heading into the in the Bulls playoff run and the playoffs themselves. Let me know what you guys think down below about the return of Alex Caruso. He played way more minutes than I was expecting him to. And like I said before, Alex Caruso said himself that he was gassed in that second half with the energy and everything that he that he brought. If that was gassed, Alex Caruso, I cannot wait to see an Alex Caruso who's fully back in the swing of things heading into the playoffs and late into the season as well. Now, one thing that we also need to talk about very heavily is the impact that Io DeSumo had in that in, in game. And Alex Caruso himself also shouted out the defense that he was able to play on Darius Garland. We held Darius Garland to, to 25 points on 24 shots, which is hugely inefficient when you think about that. Now, DeMar DeRozan didn't have a hugely efficient game either. But with that being said, the defense that the Bulls were able to play on Darius Garland, even though he did score pretty well, right, as far as getting that to that 25-point mark. But it came from free throws. It came from, you know, the refs making questionable calls and all that type of thing. So with that all being said, Io's growth is just going to continue to be so big for this team. And we also can look at him being an X Factor and what he's learned being in the starting lineup and the development that he's had over the course that Lonzo Ball has been out and over the season as well. So let me know down below, who do you think can be that X Factor? Has anything changed? Now, we'll continue to monitor it as we get play more players back healthy. But I think, for me, I really do expect Alex Russo be to be the X Factor, especially when you look at how the Bulls, five out of the last six games are all against playoff or play-in teams. Um, and, and, you know, heading into the playoffs, really going to be interesting to see how this team all comes together. And one thing that I do want to talk about is in the game as well, Nikola Vucevic getting his 38th double-double in 59 games played. I know Nikola Vucevic is having a down season compared to his, his, his usual stats, but I think we also need to acknowledge that even a down Nikola Vucevic is giving us so much. And Nikola uh, was very engaged in this game. He used his size to his advantage against a rookie in Mobley who just didn't have the body to really keep him from doing what he wanted to do. And this is something that we did not see very frequently from Nikola Vucevic at the beginning of the season. And especially sometimes over the course of our last losing streak and everything like that. It's good to see that Vooch uses his size. And I think, you know, I know Bulls fans overall are down, but I think sometimes people just don't understand like the impact that Nikola Vucevic's presence brings and how much it makes things easier on offense for the people around him as well, even at times when the shot's not falling. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think about it down below, but I do want to also give in some injury updates. So Alex Caruso is now off the, the injury report, so we know that he's going to be in there more times than not, which is exciting, which is good. Zach Levine is still listed as questionable on that, so we'll see what happens with Zach Levine in tonight's game against the Sacramento Kings, which is a late game. Um, but overall, it's it's looking better for the Bulls injury report. Uh, with, with, with things sit right now, seems like Patrick Williams, they say, could be back as early as Friday. What, what I think is going to happen is much like we saw with Alice Caruso. Once Patrick Williams has a full contact practice, as long as his body responds well to it and they take a look at it, He's probably going to be back that same day or the day after he, he gets his first full contact practice, which is very exciting. 
um, for, for uh, this franchise and that we've been looking out and seeing what we're and wondering what we're going to get from Patrick Williams. And I think also getting Patrick Williams back with 10 plus games left in the season to really get himself in rhythm, get himself in order, figure out uh, his place on the team, things like that. And getting ready for a playoff run, it could be huge. Let me know how excited you guys are about potential. I know there's something that I've asked probably in the last three videos, but when we keep getting updates and positive updates on Patrick Williams' return, it just feels good. This this team is bringing back, now with Alice Cruz, so we have two key defenders in Patrick Williams and Lonzo Ball to bring back. And I know our defense has been um, something that we've talked about very often. And, you know, I, me and Pat, the designer, talked about, like, how good is the Bulls' defense Actually, if one player really swings, makes such a dramatic swing. But I do want to say, bringing back two other elite defenders that also communicate, well, Lonzo, who communicates to the team, and also Patrick Williams and what he brings with his raw defensive talent, this team's uh, ceiling is, is really high. And I know a lot of Bulls fans have been down, but I'm really excited to get this team back at full health to see what we really can be and what we will look, at, look like gearing up for a playoff run. Before we head into that run, we have to do another West Coast trip, and let's talk about that coming up this week. The Bulls tonight have a game against Sacramento, which doesn't start until 10 p.m. my time. We still will have a pregame, postgame, and a, and a uh, halftime hangout. Pray for me on those and my energy, but we will have that. But we have Sacramento tonight, Utah on Wednesday, Phoenix on Friday. The Phoenix postgame show will be hosted by our own Ricky Fontaine again. I won't be able to host that one, so make sure you guys are on the lookout for that. But with that being said, this week, it, it looking on paper, it looks like to be a two on one week. But keep in mind, Phoenix may be without Chris Paul in that game. What does that change now? That's a Phoenix team that last night put up 140 points on the Lakers. Now that is also the Lakers, but it's still a team that can score. And the Bulls defense is going to have to be locked in on that game. But before we get into that game or get to that game, we still have to beat and face Sacramento and Utah. Now Sacramento is going to be a tough match. We saw how close they played us in the last game and you know while they're not a team that's necessarily fighting for a lot right um you still want to you don't want to take any team lightly especially the bulls who have proven that they can play with anyone but they can also almost be beat by anyone and so i hope the bulls aren't looking ahead we don't know if zach levine is going to play tonight or not we'll see with each game not having any back-to-backs this week i do think that it probably makes it more probable that we will see Zach Levine in the game tonight because there's no back-to-backs. He gets a full day of rest between every game that we play this week. But with that being said, um, if Zach Levine for some so for some reason does not play, we I, I still think that we have enough to beat Sacramento. I really do think that. Now, the Utah game can get very interesting, extremely interesting, really, when you look at it. Um, and so how the Bulls play against Utah, they're going to need to be locked in offensively and defensively. They're going to have to play like they did against uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're going to have to give a lot of heart, a lot of desire. The Utah Jazz right now are number four in the Western Conference. So, you know, be on the lookout. I know that doesn't change the Bulls not beating the top three teams in either conference. But with that being said, the Bulls face another tough opponent, playoff type atmosphere with basketball. And I do think that they have enough to beat the Utah Jazz. Now, when it gets to the Phoenix Suns game, like I said, even without Chris Paul, that team is so high octane and high powered that the Bulls really do have to be locked in. Now, do they have enough? Do they do enough to make the needed defensive stops to win that game? That's going to remain to be seen. Also, how stagnant is that offense down the stretch? Are they? Is it just DeMar again, or is Billy Donovan going to start trusting other players to do things as well down the stretch? All those questions remain to be answered in a week in which the Bulls face have three games over the course of this week. What are your guys' predictions for the Bulls' record over the course of this week? I don't know there are going to be some Debbie Downers in the comments where the Bulls are going to go one and three. I know all that's coming. I know it's coming too. The Bulls are going 3-0 from some C-Red fans. I love it all. You got to take the good with the bad. But let me know down below, what is your expectation? What do you think the Bulls' uh, record is going to be over the course of this week as they face, as they have those three games? And as far as the Bulls' schedule, it's not going to get any easier, right? Um, it, does, it does have a brief law, but then we gear up. And like I've been saying for a long time, like five out of our last six games are going to be very, very tough for the Bulls. But Luckily, he's going to show us exactly where this team stands. But, you know, I don't want to get into that. We'll get into those weeks when it's time to get into those weeks. Let me know down below. What do you guys expect the Bulls record to be over the course of this week? And that is it for me for today, guys. Make sure you're following the podcast at Bulls Central Pod. You can also send uh, any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. If you want to follow me personally, you can do so at CEO Hayes. That's C-E-O-H-A-I-Z-E. 
If you want to leave a voicemail, you can do so at 773-270-2799. We had an all-voicemail episode uh, basically on Saturday that went over very, very well. But I will be trickling in uh, voicemails over the course of the week if you guys send them in as well. But that's it for me for today, guys. Make sure you see red. Don't be red. Go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Breaks Breaks Media. Media. Media.